Aloha and welcome to A Course in Miracles, workbook for students, lesson 70. My salvation comes from me. My salvation comes from me. It says all temptation is nothing more than some form of the basic temptation. Not to believe the idea for today. Which is my salvation comes from me. I mean, that's, a, that's quite a statement. All temptation. All temptation is nothing more and some form of basic temptation to believe, not to believe the idea for today. I mean, we may believe that, or be tempted to believe that having a lot of money or power might, or the right friends, or the government, or the doctors, or science, will save us. Or if we're spiritual, we might believe that Jesus or God or even A Course in Miracles is going to save us. There are all kinds of... We might believe that a relationship with someone else is going to save us. There's all, all of these are, are idols, any idol that we look to to save us, even like pills or medicine or anything other than the love of God that we look to to save us and to the decision maker within us that chooses the love of God then that's an idol. And those are constantly temptations that we are dealing with, living in this world of, you know, fear and death, opposites and sadness. We're always tempted to look everywhere else for salvation except for where salvation really is and this is the idea of today that may be new for many of us i know it was for me that my salvation comes from me i mean i can remember when i would think oh man that's blasphemous my salvation comes from me my jesus is my savior you know but it says, salvation seems to come from anywhere except from you. So too does the source of guilt. You see, neither guilt nor salvation, you see neither guilt nor salvation as in your own mind and nowhere else. And this is why it says this. Salvation and guilt are in your own mind. The Course teaches that there really is no world out there. That everything is in our own mind. So we're, if we're looking outside of ourselves for salvation, you know, maybe we're looking for Jesus to come back or something like that to this physical world that we see outside of us. Or maybe we're looking for salvation in, you know, the government to make some kind of plan for us. Whatever it is, it's looking for salvation where it cannot be found because salvation and guilt, these two things, and that's what we're being saved from, is from guilt. These are in our own mind. The source of the release from guilt and the seeming problem of guilt are right there together. 
That's what the Course teaches, that God would not put the answer apart or somewhere else than where the seeming problem is. And so the problem, what we really are looking to be saved from is guilt. And it's guilt that are, clouds us from seeing who we truly are. And so the answer to guilt, which is the atonement, the idea that the separation had never occurred and that we are still as God created us, that is in our own mind too. So, that's kind of what it's talking about here when it says that my salvation comes from me because it's within my own mind. The problem is in my own mind of guilt and the answer, the atonement principle, is in my own mind. When you realize that all guilt is solely an invention of your mind, you'll also realize that guilt and salvation must be in the same place. And that's what we were just saying. And it is in understanding this that you are saved. In understanding that the answer and the seeming problem, guilt, is right there in the same place in our own minds. And that we invented guilt. We invented it. Not God. Not anything else. But we invented it in our own minds. The seeming cost of accepting today's idea is this. It means that nothing outside yourself can save you. And that's what we were talking about earlier. Nothing outside ourselves. Not even, of course, in miracles. Not anyone or money or power or influence. The only thing that can save us is us. And that is by understanding what the problem is, is guilt, and what the answer is, is that we made this up, that it isn't even true, it's a total illusion, and that we've never been separated from God. These, this is the answer to the one problem that we have. So, The seeming cost of accepting today's idea is this. It means that nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. But it also means that nothing outside yourself can hurt you or disturb your peace or upset you in any way. Today's idea places you in charge of the universe. And it's not talking about the universe that we perceive outside of ourselves because the Course teaches there is nothing outside of ourselves. But it's talking about the universe that we've created in our own mind, that exists in our mind. And we're in charge of it. This is, today's idea places you in charge of the universe where you belong because of what you are, the Son of God. This is not a role that can be partially accepted. This is an all or nothing course. And you must surely begin to see that accepting it, accepting who you are, is salvation. It may not, however, be clear to you why the recognition that guilt is in your own mind entails the realization that salvation is there as well. God would not have put the remedy for the sickness 
where it cannot help. That is the way your mind has worked, but hardly his. He wants you to be healed, so he has kept the source of healing where the need for healing lies. And that's in our mind. You have tried to do just the opposite, making every attempt, however distorted or fantastic it might be, to separate healing from sickness for which it was intended, and thus keep the sickness. Your purpose was to ensure that healing did not occur. God's purpose was to ensure that it did. And when it's talking about the you here, it's talking about the decision maker. Or it's talking about, it's not talking about your true self. It's talking about the decision maker identified as or believing themselves to be the ego, the separated self, the separate will. And the thing is, is that we chose that and a part of us wants and likes the idea of a separate individual identity. I mean, we like being, we like being separate from everybody else. We like the whole idea of not being one with God and one with everyone else. We like individualization. I mean, especially in this country, it's totally built on that idea of independence. And <clears throat> so there's the big part of us that doesn't want us to realize salvation because it means the end of that individualized, independent self or the ego. They can't both exist. And so this is kind of what the Course is talking to us as the you, the decision maker who's chosen to hang on to that identity of being a body, of an individual person living in a body separate from everyone else and separate from God. Even though it isn't true, we like and want to keep that illusion, we want to keep it going. But so that's what it means. Now, this is the way your mind has worked, but hardly the way God's worked. It says, you've tried to do just the opposite, making every attempt, however distorted and fantastic it might be, to separate healing from sickness. It says that your purpose, the you that thinks of itself as separate, was to ensure that healing did not occur. But today we practice realizing that God's will and ours are really the same in this. God wants us to be healed, and we do not really want to be sick, because it makes us unhappy. Therefore, in accepting the idea for today, we are really in agreement with God. He doesn't want us to be sick, and neither do we. He wants us to be healed, and so do we. <clears throat> so we are ready for two longer practice periods today, each of which should last 10 to 15 minutes. We will, however, still let you decide when to undertake them. We will follow this practice for a number of lessons, and it would again be well to decide in advance when would be a good time to lay aside for each of them, and then adhering to your decisions as closely as possible. So we're creating some, the, the Spirit or Jesus is, is letting us begin to create some discipline in our mind around this whole 
period of mind, this whole mind training. Begin this practice, these practice periods, by repeating the idea for today, adding a statement, signifying your recognition that salvation comes from nothing outside of you. You might put it this way. My salvation comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. And then, devote a few minutes with your eyes closed to reviewing some of the external places where you have looked for salvation in the past. You know, and these are like, oh, you know, like a, like my parents uh, to bail me out or to the government or to the doctors or to science, whatever it is, to making a lot of money, to saving a lot of money. Whatever you look to, okay. in other people, in possessions, in various situations and events, and in self-concepts that you sought to make real, recognize that it's not there. Salvation is not in any of those things. Maybe temporary reprieve or salvation the eternal salvation and happiness is not there so we can tell ourselves my salvation cannot come from any of these things that I've looked to my salvation comes from me and only from me now we will try again to reach the light in you which is where your salvation is. You cannot find it in the clouds that surround the light, and it is in them that you've been looking for it. So remember this idea of the light surrounded by all of these clouds. And yesterday, we went through the clouds to try to reach the light which is where our salvation is. And in those clouds is where we see all the illusions that, we, that our mind or the ego has created. But we have to be able to go through this with Jesus to reach the light. And he's promised to go with us if we'll just ask him. So... You cannot find salvation in the clouds that surround the light. And it is them that you've been looking for it. It is not there. It is past the clouds. In the light beyond, remember that you will have to go through the clouds before you can reach the light. You have to go through the clouds. But remember also, that you've never found anything in the cloud patterns you imagine that endured or that you wanted. Since all illusions of salvation have failed you, surely you do not want to remain in the clouds, looking vainly at the eye for idols there when you could so easily walk on into the light of real salvation. Try to pass the clouds by whatever means appeals to you. If it helps you, think of me. And this is Jesus, is the me here. Because Jesus is the one that gave us the course. He used Helen Chuckman, but... He was the one who inspired her to write it. So think of me holding your hand and leading you. And I assure you, this is Jesus talking, that this will be no idle fantasy. For the short and frequent practice periods today, remind yourself that your salvation comes from you 
And nothing but your own thoughts can hamper your progress. Nothing but our own thoughts can hamper our progress. And that's why we're doing this mind training course to get our thoughts, to get us thinking correctly, to get us in our right mind. You are free from all external interference. You are in charge of your salvation. You are in charge of the salvation of the world. And this is your inner world, the world in your mind. So say then, my salvation comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's salvation and my own. So here we go. You guys are getting deeper into these ideas. And if you find yourself resisting them, that's normal. That's normal. It's okay. I mean, this might be a, a concept that goes against a lot of your ideas of what salvation is and you might be resisting it certainly you are if you know our ego does want doesn't want us to be saved and it's going to throw up all kinds of ideas why we shouldn't you know do these exercises of the course in miracles but jesus understands that and he's there to help us so you know, it says if we need to, we can just imagine, ask him, just take him by the hand and walk through these clouds with him. And then he said it will not be an idle fantasy. So if that helps you today, use it. Let Jesus help you. You know, he's there to help. So aloha to you, peace to you. May you find salvation. May this day be your day to find and glimpse and experience joy, peace, love, happiness, oneness like you've never experienced before. So thank you for letting me do this workbook with you and I look forward to continuing, and I'll see you tomorrow. Mahalo.